Hello there. Today, I thought we could use slow-mo to learn how the Nintendo Zapper worked. This was a peripheral for the original Nintendo, the NES, used with games such as Duck Hunt from 1984. And this is an incredibly clever piece of kit, especially for its time. A little bit before my time, I grew up with this bad boy. Probably the best little gray box ever made. Although I was quite surprised when I moved to America that their version of the Super Nintendo looked like that which I think is deeply unfortunate. Okay, now that I'm done annoying half the audience, let's get on with it. The Nintendo Zapper. I think the original one was gray. This was a, a later version in orange. And in games such as Duck Hunt, it could tell exactly where you had this pointed without using any other piece of equipment other than the gun itself. Please forgive the line that's moving down the screen right now. I can't see that with my eyes, but uh, we'll learn why that happens in the slow-mo. Have you spotted how this works? You can see it with your eyes, but the slow-mo will really help us out. You'll notice that every time I pull the trigger, a white box will appear around the duck. And the white box is what this is looking for. Here we are at 10,000 frames a second. As we learned in previous videos, each frame is drawn by the TV from top to bottom, line by line. And if we slow the footage down to 82,000 frames a second, you can see that each line shoots across the screen from left to right extremely quickly. Here's the same action slowed down to 1.75 million frames a second. At this speed, a second lasts almost 19 hours. A little bit of maths tells us that this specific screen is capable of drawing a line from the left to the right of the frame at approximately 24,500 miles an hour. That effectively means that given an hour, a line moving at this speed could travel around the entire circumference of the Earth. You can see here that at no point on a CRT display do you see an entire frame at once when filming at this speed. You can only see the current line being drawn and it's actually your eye's persistence of vision that lets you see an entire frame at once. So I'm gonna artificially extend the trails of each frame to make it easier for us to see which frame is being drawn. In this game, it seems as though every new frame has the duck in a different position on the screen. It doesn't necessarily change the animation sprite, but the duck model is drawn in a slightly different spot every time. So now I'm gonna turn off the trails and go back to the actual raw footage of how these scan lines look. When the trigger is pressed, the zapper sends a signal down to the console and this light sensor at the back of the gun is now looking at a focused area of the screen through this lens. Take note of where the duck is here. The console will then finish drawing its current frame and then send an entirely black frame to the display. Nothing is drawn. And on the next frame, a white box is drawn exactly over where the sprite of the duck was. Whether or not the zapper saw that white box determines what happens next. In this instance, I got a successful hit on the duck, so the game redraws the background with no sprites on. It drew it again, but with only the score updated. And in the next frame, we see the flying duck sprite replaced with the shot duck, and the game continues. All in all here, the duck was gone for four frames, but it's so fast that you barely notice with your eyes. And you'll see that when I play in two duck mode, there'll be two white boxes to aim at. I was quite surprised to learn that in two duck mode, it actually draws each box on a different frame. That was frame one. It's now going all the way to the bottom, starting again at the top and drawing a white box for the second duck. It then takes multiple passes to draw each sprite back in. And you can see there, I shot at the second duck. One of the reasons it draws an entirely black frame before any of the white boxes is so you can't just point the gun into a bright light source, like a light bulb. It actually has to see black then white a frame later, otherwise it won't reward any points. I then opened up the aperture fully on my lens to let in even more light and noticed that there is even a faint line when it draws an entirely black frame. A vector display would only draw the lit areas and move about the screen almost willy-nilly. But because this is rasterized frames, the beam will travel over every area of the screen, whether it draws anything or not. So the zapper itself isn't actually shooting anything. The TV isn't receiving anything. This is the receiver and it's just using its little lens here to search for the white on the screen. They also thought about menu navigation with the Zapper. You can navigate and select everything on the menu with just this one button, and uh, it uses the exact same method. It flashes the entire screen on the menu, and when it detects no flash, the selected menu item changes, and then when it detects the flash, it selects it. So instead of the tiny little square, it'll flash the whole screen and use the exact same method on the menu and that is a lot of dead ducks. I honestly think this is such a genius piece of engineering. The fact that one peripheral and one cable was then compatible with 
pretty much every TV in existence at the time 40 years ago. Just blows my mind a little bit. I just think it's so cool. Let me know in the comments of any other electronics that worked in really interesting ways that would be cool to film in slow-mo. I'm very interested to learn about all that stuff. Hopefully you enjoyed this short little video. Make sure you subscribe if you like slow-mo. And what, what were they doing with this? Like, what was the...